this view is looking up at F1 portion of ATP synthase from the membrane surface. During ATP synthesis cycle, first of all, ADP and PI bind loosely to one of the three beta subunits of F1. Here, arbitrarily, the beta subunit is designated as beta 1. The nucleotide binding site of beta 1 subunit is present in the O or open conformation. The H plus ion or proton flocks through F0 portion of the ATP synthase causes a 120 degree rotation of asymmetric gamma subunit. All three beta subunits like beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 of F1 are fixed relative to gamma subunit. Means beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 subunits of F1 do not rotate during the entire cycle of ATP synthesis. The 120 degree rotation of gamma subunit pushes differently against the beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 subunits. As a result of this push, the beta 1 subunit undergoes a conformational change from O to L or open to loose. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 1 subunit for ADP and PI increases. So, the L conformation of beta 1 subunit binds loosely to ADP and PI. Also, as a result of the push, the beta 2 subunit undergoes a conformational change from T to O or from tight to open. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 2 subunit for its previously bound ATP decreases. As a result, the bound ATP is released from the beta 2 subunit. Also, as a result of this push, the beta 3 subunit undergoes a conformational change from L to T or loose to tight. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 3 subunit for ADP and PI increases. So, the beta 3 subunit in its T or tight conformation tightly binds to previously bound ADP and PI. Now, the gamma subunit does not rotate, but the ADP and PI in the T site or tight site of beta 3 subunit form ATP spontaneously. This ATP formation from ADP and PI does not require an input of additional energy because the active site of T state of beta 3 subunit has a special environment. At the same time, a new ADP and PI bind loosely to the unoccupied O site or open site on beta 2 subunit. Now, the H plus ion or proton flux through F0 portion of the ATP synthase causes another 120 degree rotation of gamma subunit. This 120 degree rotation of gamma subunit pushes differently against the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 subunits. As a result of this push, the beta 1 subunit undergoes a conformational change from L to T or loose to tight. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 1 subunit for its previously bound ADP and PI increases. So, the beta 1 subunit binds more tightly to the previously bound ADP and PI. Also, as a result of the push, the beta 2 subunit undergoes a conformational change 
from O to L or open to loose. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta to subunit for previously bound ADP and PI increases. So, the L conformation of beta to subunit binds loosely to previously bound ADP and PI. Also, as a result of the push, the beta 3 subunit undergoes a conformational change from T to O or tight to open. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 3 subunit for its previously bound ATP decreases. As a result, the bound ATP is released from beta 3 subunit. Now, the gamma subunit does not rotate, but the ADP and PI bound to T site or tight site of beta 1 subunit form ATP spontaneously. This ATP formation from ADP and PI does not require an input of additional energy because the active site of T state of beta 1 subunit has a special environment. At the same time, a new ADP and PI bind loosely to the unoccupied O site or open site on the beta 3 subunit. Now, the H plus ion or proton flux through F0 portion of the ATP synthase causes another 120 degree rotation of gamma subunit. This 120 degree rotation of gamma subunit pushes differently against beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 subunits. As a result of this push, the beta 1 subunit undergoes a conformational change from T to O or tight to open. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 1 subunit for its previously bound ATP decreases. As a result, the bound ATP is released from the beta 1 subunit. Also, as a result of the push, the beta 2 subunit undergoes a conformational change from L to T or loose to tight. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 2 subunit for its previously bound ADP and PI increases. So, the beta 2 subunit in its T or tight conformation tightly binds to previously bound ADP and PI. Also, as a result of the push, the beta 3 subunit undergoes a conformational change from O to L or open to loose. Due to this conformational change, the binding affinity of beta 3 subunit for its previously bound ADP and PI increases. So, the beta 3 subunit in its L or loose conformation loosely binds to its previously bound ADP and PI. Now, the gamma subunit does not rotate, but the ADP and PI in the T site or tight site of beta 2 subunit form ATP spontaneously. This ATP formation from ADP and PI does not require an input of additional energy because the active site of T state of beta 2 subunit has a special environment. At the same time, a new ADP and PI bind loosely to the unoccupied O site or open site on beta 1 subunit. With this, the ATP formation cycle is completed. This complete cycle of ATP formation in which the gamma subunit rotates 360 degree produces 3 ATPs. Please like, subscribe and share.